What is going on, everyone? Anthony Cofrancesco from Data Dive, and this is the Quick Start Guide. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining in depth the product scorecard, how to fill out each of the questions, and how to interpret the score at the end and decide whether or not you wanna launch a product, decide what the risk level of that product is. So for this example, I'm going to be working on the same example we've been using for all of the quick start guide and FAQ videos, and that is my cat tower. So the product scorecard has four different sections. As you fill out questions in each of these sections, you're going to get a score, either positive or negative. When you get to the end, you're going to get a score for each section as well as an overall score. And that score is going to give you an indication of the risk level of that niche. So if you're looking to validate product opportunities and accurately assess the risk level, then the product scorecard is going to be perfect for you. So I'm gonna go through and explain how to answer each of the questions in the product scorecard. Almost all of the answers can be found here inside of the data dive tool. What I like to do is just open up new tabs for each of the parts of the scorecard I need. So I opened up Roots, MKL, and I'll add on a few as we keep going. So the first question I need to answer is the number of keyword roots. So I can see that here in the Roots tab. I like to be able to see these orange bars, so I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. And I can see here for this niche, remember a keyword root is two or more keywords, which is a unique way of describing a product. So I have cat tree, cat tower, cat tree tower. Like no one's gonna search for indoor cat and buy this product. No one's gonna search for large cat. You have to think about search intent here. So cat condo is a good one. Cat tree large is a good one. Cat tree large cat is another good one. Tower large cat. I can see there's a lot of keywords related to the size of the cat that can fit on this. And it looks like I've already got six tree indoor cat. And you can see that there's more keyword roots beyond the ones that I have selected. For this first question, all I have to do is answer how many keyword roots are there for this product, and I can click seven or more. The reason that this is giving us a positive score is because the more ways that there are that people are searching for a product, well, this is an advantage for us as people who know how to use data dive, because now I can't, I don't have to just focus on one keyword. I can focus on a bunch of different keyword routes to make sales from. But now we have to move on to question number two, which is the distribution of root search volume. So this is saying out of those routes, the top two routes make up what percentage of search volume? So I can come back over here to the Roots tab. If you're not seeing the orange bar, you can just zoom out a little bit. And I can see that Cat Tree makes up 70% of the searches for this niche. And then Cat Tree Tower makes up another 0.1, another 10%. So 0.7 and 0.1 is gonna be 0.8, which is more than 75. So the reason that that is going to be a slight negative is because there might be seven or more different ways people are searching for this product, but the vast majority of searches are coming down to two keywords. So yes, I can make sales from many other keywords, but the vast majority are gonna be cat tree and cat tower. The next question is the number of relevant keywords with a search volume greater than 450. I can find this answer in the master keyword list. So I'm gonna go back to my MKL. And I can see here that all of these keywords, let me get rid of large, all of these keywords are going to have a search volume greater than 450, right? This is a great niche because there's a lot of different keywords. You can see like all of these, even though they're just thousands, these are just adding up and adding up and adding up. So every single keyword in this list has a search volume greater than 450. So the answer to that question is going to be 253. So that's going to be more than 100. More relevant keywords with search volume greater than 450 is going to mean meaningful ways that I can get eyeballs, meaningful keywords and relevant keywords that I can rank for and get sales from. So we finished traffic distribution. We got a score of a positive 350. Let's move on to profitability. So these questions are quite simple. It takes a little bit of critical thought, but how long is this product going to be relevant for? I think with a cat tree, it's fair to say five years. 
and then your ROI is just your profit divided by your net landed costs. Now, I'm just gonna estimate this for right now at over 100%. In another quick start guide video, you can see the breakdown of how to fill out the profits tool. I'm not gonna go through that right now in the interest of time. So we are got another 150, that brings our score up to 500. Now we have this section on potential. Potential is all about different ways that you can improve the product. So can you save on packaging? Can you save on fulfillment? Can you, say, can you get a utility patent? Can you get a design patent? Can you add uh, redesign the product to add features? And then these last two questions are new. It's saying there are at least X sellers selling the same design I plan on selling. So if I would just go to China, source this product and get the exact same cat tree that other sellers are selling, I might click more than four. Or if my design is original, I might click my design is original. If you're selling the same product as other people, it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit more risky. For right now, I'm gonna choose, I did not choose the design yet. And then that's part one. Part two is design test results. So if you did create an original design, you're gonna test your product against the top three competitors and then use a service like IntelliV to test your product and see what do potential consumers prefer. So if you're getting less than 10% of the votes, it's not a good sign. You might wanna go back and redesign the product. Or if you're getting more than 40% of the votes, that's going to be a strong advantage. Again, for the purpose of this training, I'm gonna choose I did not test yet. So potential was really just a break even at that point. Before you click that, you can get a design patent or a utility patent, or you can improve the logistics. Make sure that you actually, in fact, can. Don't fill these out just to uh, get, a, get a good score, right? It's kind of like you're in gym class. If you uh, are cheating on your push-ups, you're only hurting yourself. So the last section here is competitiveness. And I would expect that when you're filling out these product scorecards, your score is almost always gonna be very good until you get to competitiveness. This is really a lot of the times where your score is gonna come down. So in terms of reviews, it's asking us how many of the competitors have more than a thousand reviews. And so I can see that in the master keyword list. I can just look here for review count, and I'm just counting anyone that has more than a thousand. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm already at nine. So more than seven out of the top 10 competitors have more than a thousand reviews. I wouldn't limit it to just 10, but typically the people in the first 10 spots are gonna have the most reviews. I don't think I need to explain this. More reviews just means more competitive. Next is Amazon SEO. How many of the competitors are ranked on page one for more than 60% of the search volume? So you can see that here. That's anyone who's very strong or anyone who's strong. You can also find this in the uh, overview tab. So we've got 13 sellers that are ranked for 80 plus percent of the MKL and another two sellers that are ranked for 60 plus percent of the MKL. So a total of 15 sellers are ranked for more than 60% of the MKL. So this is gonna give us a minus 250. What this means is that this niche is already saturated with many sellers that are already very sophisticated on Amazon. Next is the average selling price point, which I can also find in the MKL. I just look here and I can see price is $52.99. And remember, I did add a couple of more expensive options here. So I've done this dive earlier and the, the average was a little bit lower. The rationale between the higher price being a lower risk is because if you just saw a few weeks ago, Amazon raised their fees. So the lower price your product is, you could go very quickly as fulfillment fees change, as logistics prices goes up, like during COVID, we were paying $20,000 for a container, right? PPC costs goes up. You could quickly go from having a profitable product to having a not profitable product. So 50 is gonna be just a, actually a, a pretty good, uh, it's a little bump here. We're just right over 16 to 49. The next question is how many 1P sellers do we have? And we can see that again in the master keyword list by seller country. The 1P sellers are going to be Amazon. So in this case, we have two sellers that are 1P, which is less than three. 
If you see Amazon selling a ton in your brand, in your niche rather, that's just gonna be something to be aware of. Next question here is about visual content, and it's asking how many of the competitors have great images and A plus content. To see this, I can open up Deep Dive, and then I'm gonna to go to the collapsed all view, and I can see all of the competitor image galleries all in one spot. So just at quick glance, these images look all pretty fantastic, to be honest. If I was looking at the niche and every image looked like this, where it's just a very standard white background shot without any kind of props, any kind of lifestyle, then I might say these images don't look good. But now looking through each of these, these all look quite strong, right? If all of the images for this whole niche look like this, I might say, mm, I think we could do a little bit better. In this case, I'm gonna say more than five sellers have great images and A plus content. Google Trends we saw earlier are flat. Seasonality, we saw earlier that this product, while there is a little bit of a jump in Q4, the product really can be sold all year round. Variations is going to be a big one. And again, I can see this inside of the master keyword list. We have this row here for variations. On average, there's five per niche. I'm counting anyone that has more than four variations. So this one has 23, 14. So I'm just counting. <laughs> so this is three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm already at seven. So that's at least six of the top competitors have more than four variations. The reason that this is a risk is because I can no longer be the first seller to come into this niche and say, you know what? I'm gonna sell a few different size options. I'm gonna sell a few different color options. That has already been done and it is no longer a competitive advantage. One of the sellers in this niche had 26 variations. It's also high risk because it's gonna mean if I wanna compete in this niche, on average, I'm gonna probably need at least five or six variations, which is going to significantly increase my product cost because now I'm not just wa launching one product, I'm probably gonna launch like five or six minimum just to compete. Major brands, this is the number of brands that have large branded search or are sold in retail. So I looked at this list earlier and I didn't real I didn't I didn't recognize any of these brands. You can do a little bit of googling to find out. You can also look inside Deep Dive. I just didn't I didn't recognize any from this, so I'm going to say less than 3. For developed niche, this is how many of the sellers have bundles or multi-packs. In this case, I don't think anyone's buying a 3-pack of cat towers. You really just need one. If someone wanted to add on like balls or other cat toys with this, I didn't see, I didn't come across that in this niche, then that might change things. Again, same thing as variations. If someone is already doing a bundle or a multi-pack, then that is no longer a competitive, competitive advantage. I can't come in and do that to give me an, a, a leg up in this niche. So the last question here is written content. And it's asking me how many of the top competitors have uh, at least three or more exact keywords in the listing. So for that, I can go to the listing builder and I'm gonna go to the battle of the listings and I'm gonna go to the title. I'm gonna filter by search volume and I'm just counting anyone that has three or more exact keywords in the title. So I count one, two, three, four, five. There's at least six which I think is over the criteria, and that's gonna take me down another 50 points. Now, one thing I do wanna mention about this is in the potential section. Remember, I chose, I did not design this yet. I did not test yet. This, I think, is gonna be the really difficult part. Right now, the score is at a positive 150. I have a feeling that even if I would choose my design as original, it would be very difficult to create a cat tree unless maybe you use AI and come up with something very unique, it would be very difficult to get more than 40% of the votes. I think realistically, you're gonna probably get around the 25%, which is gonna take you either minus 100 or a positive 50. So you could very quickly go from having a positive score to a less positive score. Again, I'm gonna choose I did not test yet, just something to keep in mind for this product. So. That's gonna bring us to the end of our quick start guide video for the product scorecard. You might be asking, Anthony, what do I do with this score? I've got a positive 150. Does that mean that I should launch the product or does that mean I shouldn't launch the product? 
Well, the answer is, is that all of the scores that come from the product scorecard are relative, meaning they're not going to have as much of a value to you until you fill out many of these scorecards. So after you fill out dozens and dozens of these product scorecards, you're going to see some scores are high and positive. Some scores are going to be low and negative. The only thing the score means is that the higher a score is positive, it means that that is going to generally be a lower risk product to sell. And the lower a score is negative, it's generally going to be a higher risk product. So just because this is at 150, it's right about in the middle. I can find products that have a minus 800, minus 1,000. I can also find other products on the other end of the spectrum. Just because you get a large negative score doesn't mean that you won't launch the product. It just means that if you do launch the product, you should keep in mind some of the risks that are associated with launching a product into that niche. Keep in mind too that the product scorecard is only the first step in this process. The next thing to do after this would be to fill out the profits tool. I've already done this for this product and I know that to launch this product, I would probably need about a quarter million dollar budget. If I'm launching a product, I've personally got only about a $30,000 budget. So it doesn't matter if this score is positive or negative. I just don't have a quarter million dollars and I don't have any clear way of getting a quarter million dollars. And unless I felt really good, I don't think I would feel comfortable asking other people around me for a quarter million dollars to launch a product that I likely can't innovate, at least in my mind right now. So we're going to wrap up this video right now, but be sure to check out our other video in the quick start guide, which explains how to fill out the profits tool. And that's going to show you how to accurately estimate the budget required to launch. You use both of these metrics in tandem during product validation, and it's going to give you a good idea of what products fit your criteria. Thanks so much and have an awesome day.